There you go, bro. There you go. There you go. Let me click away here. Let me go to uh, a live chat. Okay, let me turn this uh, thing on, man. Come on, bro. Be right back. Sorry about that. He only had a couple of them. Here we go. Bam. Uh, sorry about that. I'm just going to take a couple of more minutes. I'm not going to put on my grandpa's sweater, sorry. Not going to do it. Put that there. Try now this, uh, well, it's not a new webcam. It's an open box webcam. So, anybody's on the chat, let me know if this one looks better. Uh, this is the old Chinese one. Here in the basement. So, now I have two Logitech C920. This looks like a newer model. Uh, cause the other one is in the second floor, of course, the studio up there. I want to do live stream up there, but I want to be, sometime I want to be in the basement, I want to do live stream, so. Okay, so let me switch around here a little bit. Let me check everything. Audio looks good. Uh, let me go over here. Uh, right now I got nobody watching, nobody watching. Uh, nobody watching. Not yet. Let me close that, okay. So I'll wait a few minutes. Yep. So this one, I'm gonna have this one now in the boiler room. So, so I got a webcam on the second floor. Logitech C920. Logitech C920 here, and this Chinese one. It's okay, it's just the auto the autofocus and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I don't think it works at all. I'm gonna put this one in the in the boiler room now. Eventually, I want to set up a computer over there. So, anyway, uh, hello and welcome to Danny Finance. This is show number. Oh no, I, I'm eventually I'm gonna get a chair too. And I got this. Uh, I like upstairs. I got my nice reclining chair. I got a standing desk over here. I just got a little table and this chair. And there's a puddle of water right there. A small puddle of water. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because uh, yesterday, oh, yesterday, I mean, excuse me, Saturday, we had almost four inches of rain. And uh, guess what? Got a little puddle here. Again, uh, this is, uh, this is going to be, I guess, a, a occurrence from now on recently because, uh, I don't know, we had a wet winter. And this March has been... One of the rain, the wettest March that we had in quite a long time. I think we didn't break the record, but we almost did. It was very close. 
And it's still not over yet. We still got a couple of more days in March. And, uh, you know, it's just crazy with the wet weather. So I just turned off the pump. It's a little puddle. It's not much. It's a little. I, I can show you. Let me show you. It's just a little puddle right there. And uh, not a big deal. Let me put the... Live chat here too. Okay. And let's switch back to the software over here. And there we go. Because our, our YouTube studio, it is kind of uh there is a delay on YouTube studio as opposed to here in, on the uh OBS software. You know about the OBS software? I, it doesn't tell me how many people are watching, doesn't have I need to get a widget for that maybe. Is it somewhere I can incorporate it in here? Uh, I guess somebody will let me know and say hello. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this is Danny Finance, show number four. Um, I'm located in Yonkers, New York, USA. And um, I've been uh, doing this channel for about... Well, the original channel on this is, goes way back. But Danny Finance format on this channel is now, what, three years? Uh, a little over three years now, just about. Of course, my main radio channel is uh, Danny Show with Radio DX. Um, if you go to all my links page, all my social media is there. And of course, if you want to donate, you know, yeah, you can donate. You can send me uh, Bitcoin there, Ethereum. This is my, my uh, of course, my, uh, where you can donate to. Of course, I accept PayPal. And these are my channels, of course, Danny Shirtwave and Radio DA. I have Danny Retro Gaming. There he goes, Danny Finance. I have a tech channel. I have a, a, quite a few channels, and I have all the social media here. You can welcome to follow. I will also follow you back. If you also have a channel or social media you want me to follow you back, I will. I pretty much follow everybody. Unless you're really weird and you start DMing me every two seconds and... Uh, you creep me, you you know, you, you give me the creepy vibe, then you're, you're going to be gone. Uh, I had a couple of those, you know. I <laughs> I don't, I don't mind, <laughs> uh, how, how you say it? I don't mind, you know, you say hello and whatever, but, you know. I had a couple of people, especially on my radio channel, that, uh, uh, you know, would DM me every often. I'm talking about, like, every time the person would, you know. Uh, had a thought in his head or whatever, like literally, like uh, like a, like, a, like like a texting girlfriend, literally like that, and I, it kind of creeped me out. And then uh, he went on my live feed, and he was always uh, annoying me with like, you know, I don't. I, when I say there is no such thing as a stupid question, there isn't to a point, especially when you are, you know, at that. Well, I don't want to shout. I don't want to. People know who he is on my radio channel. Well, he was because he's no longer there. He's been banned. Especially when you claim you're in a general uh, license, uh, amateur radio license operator and you're asking the most stupidest basic questions. Um, you know. Of course, I didn't believe him that he was a general until I looked him up. Long story short, he looked me up and he, you know, because I, I am also amateur radio operator. And I have a technician license. And uh, he does have a general license, which is uh, the second level above the license that I have. And so I scratch my head. Sometimes people, uh, they have all this stuff on paper. But the guy, obviously, he didn't know a lick about anything. So that's why I take it with a grain of salt when people say, Yeah, I'm an extra. I'm amateur radio operator. I'm an extra. Or well, I'm a general. And they know less than... Uh, what they claim they, they know. So, man, this guy was really annoying. He would creep me out with his DMs all the time. He would he talk to me like I like I'm not, like, like I'm a kid. I'm like, well, you know, I'm a 57 year old man, bro. And he, I think he's in his uh, mid 30s or something, talking to me like I'm a kid, like calling me like nickname, like viejo and all that. I'm like, yo, bro, you don't know who you're talking to, bro. You know, have, have some kind of respect. Yeah, so, yep. All right, so let's get on with it. I'm, I'm going to get on with the topics now. 
But there you go. So uh, all my links at uh, Dan the One, all my links dot com slash Dan the One. Let me put the actually let me put the link in there. I will put the link in the description too. And I will also put it in the chat. Let me just copy over here. Bam, bam. Copy. There we go. There we go. And then uh Gonna hit, gonna hit one more time on that because unfortunately I get the stupid heart that's always here. I have no idea. I have no idea why they're still doing this this heart thing here. It kind of gets in the way of thing. I don't know. They're trying to do the TikTok thing going on here, and uh, it's really annoying. All right. So let's get down to the topic. All right. So first thing is first, I know people are going to say, oh, well, yeah, please just uh, no, keep that to yourself. Okay, let me close that wicked thing. Keep popping up. All right. So first thing is first, uh, court lord bond in Trump fraud judgment appeal. 11th hour temporary prevents, of course, the crazy one, Letitia James from uh, China Caesar's uh, assets. Uh, they lowered it to $175 million. Originally, it was about $455 million. Of course, you know, uh, you, you tried many, many, many sources to try to get... Uh, of course, um, you know, the truth is... Um, even though you have billions of dollars worth of real estate, and even the top billionaires can tell you they don't have that much cash on hand most of the time. Especially like what uh, what uh, Kevin O'Leary said that real estate is very leverage, and I can tell you that because I know a few people that own property, uh, and they basically have very little cash reserve. So you know, <laughs> so when people say, "Yeah, you have billions of dollars worth of uh, you know real estate," doesn't mean I have billions of dollars worth of cash. Okay, that's just a net worth. And I'm going to get into the whole thing about that now, but th basically that is, um, you know, when you look at somebody's net worth, we're talking about like uh, what they have in, in terms of uh, stocks, uh, you know, 401k or that type of thing, property, uh, anything that's tangible is part of your uh, overall net worth. So even though, you know, he, he was worth billions, I'm just saying. Uh, cash on hand, uh, I believe uh, the, they say that he has about about 500 million cash on hand. Of course, he is running for president. Some of that money is going to go to his uh, campaign. Uh, in 2016, when he ran for president, he spent about $100 million on that campaign in 2016. So, you know, it does cost a lot to become president. <laughs> I, you know, it was $100 million. And, you know, although I think the judgment is bullshit, uh, at least somebody stepped in, which, you know, we all hope they do, because honestly, this would have been bad for New York City. A lot of businesses are already leaving, and don't get me started on that, because also the congestion pricing is coming up in June, and that's a whole nother issue, and right now, I mean, of course, if this would have went through and they would have started putting padlocks on his uh, property and all that. Uh, I think the last uh, businesses would have been leaving. And any business that will, any future business that wants to come in, they're going to look at this example and say, no. Why the hell want to do business in New York when this happened to him? It's not a political thing. It's not a party thing. It's not like that. It's just, you know, it, it just sets a bad, you know, it's bad for New York. Period. So, glad this happened. Uh, so, uh, some of, uh, I guess, the uh, appeals court uh, that came to their senses and they said, "No, we need to step in and, and, and do something about this." So, it's a ten. Uh, it's a hundred seventy-five million, and he has ten days to, uh, you know, post a bond, which he's quite confident he will do that. Okay, and that's going to lead to the next next uh, article, which is the. The stock, the Digital War Acquisition Corp. There is a merger with 
the True Social, um, his company, which is the True Social, they did acquire True Social. There's part of the merger. So today went up 35% on the news that he did get his bond lowered. So because uh, the uh, the news was that had he wouldn't have gotten his bond lowered, they would have had some uh, uh, special meeting or something that, depending on the price of the stock, um, he would have been he would have had about uh, he has about eighty million shares of this, uh, which are going to be trading tomorrow under the ticker symbol DJT. Uh, the um, what is the name of the company now? The new company. Uh, it's, it's, it's still going to be no. I don't think it's going to be Digital War Trend. I, th I think it is, but I think they just changed ticker symbol something. Anyway, um, so based on that, that the price. Depending on the price, he would have more than enough to cover it. But the problem is with that, there is a you, you cannot sell off the stock right away. There is a time frame where you have to keep the stock. Basically, bottom line is yeah, he doesn't have to go there because of this decision today. So that helps. So that's why the, this stock uh, went up thirty five percent today, which uh, which is you know pretty good for him because now uh, not only he got his bond lower, he's going to be a lot more richer. <laughs> So I guess, you know, like the guy say, he keeps winning. No matter what they throw at him, he keeps winning. So, you know, driving these people crazy. Driving all the, all the, uh, the, uh, the lefty and the, uh, corrupt media and all that. They're driving them all crazy. Uh, I know people wanted to see the image of, uh, you know, I'm going to call it Felicia. Uh, coming with the, uh, padlock and trying to padlock the, uh, Trump Tower and call it the Leticia Tower. Uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and I'm sure they're not happy about that. But you know what? Uh, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, uh, many people don't want to admit that. You know, people don't have no sense of business. Don't understand that when you go after somebody for something so trivial. And, you know, and nobody nobody lost money on there. It was not like a Bernie made off that thing. It was not like the Sam Brankman free thing that people lost their 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 life, their you know their 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 life savings and all that. This didn't happen. Nobody got hurt on this uh, his dealings. Um, in fact, the banks made money, and he paid off his uh, debts. So this is a really stupid decision. Of course, we all know why. You know, it's just uh, you know, they they call it what it is called lawfare, and that's what's happening. Okay, so there you go. I'm switching back and forth because I want to see if uh, I'm still new to this thing here with the uh, using both software. That's why I like streaming regularly with the streaming. Okay, so this is why. <laughs> and of course, um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is back at seventy thousand, and we're having to see all green here. And of course, uh, Bitcoin. Well, it was at seventy thousand. Right below, it went right below seventy thousand. But um, it's right back up. It was a sell-off for the last few days. And now, as you can see, okay. Let me just go to. Uh, let me just go back to the main. As you can see, the trend, overall market is up three percent. And as you can see, everything is uh, well, not everything, but most of it is uh. Bitcoin is up. Uh, most of the major, uh, you know, old coins are up too. Okay, so it's nice little, um, nice little rally going on there. Of course, I said on my last live stream that I had my um, uh, my Shiba Inu was on Shiba Swap, and I, I finally took it out the other day. I was very disappointed on the return in the last three years. Because I got in on Shiba Swap when it first opened. And on day one. I had my tokens in since day one. And uh, I was very disappointed. I had put in 108 million. Uh, what it was that? 300. No, 108 million. 35,000 something. I forgot what it was. Anyway, uh, when I took it out, I, I basically gained another 50,000 tokens. That was it. So I don't, if you want to do the rate of return on that, it's got to be like minuscule. I'm uh, very disappointed. Uh, I probably spent more in gas fees than what I, I mean. 
I, I think I spent more on gas fees. I'm um, staking it, and then I'm staking it. Then actually, what I earned on the tokens, even at the current price right now. Because I remember when I staked that the gas fees were a lot higher. Remember, Ethereum was ridiculous at one time. It was very, very, you couldn't catch a break on a gas fee. Now, it's it's reasonable now, but sometimes it goes up kind of crazy too. Not as much. So, of course, in my case, you know, I had to wait till the uh, GUI was. And there was software, there, there is a website you can check, they, they monitor that. Um, um, there's software that you can check that, but I, I just, I was just patient. I said, you know what? I'm going to wait. So I believe one, I th think that when I did the uh, approval, cause you have to, every time you stake and you unstake, you have to do two transactions. And that's the reason why I, I don't recommend, uh, staking anymore. Uh, you know, it's just ridiculous with the fees. Uh, to me, it, it, it smells like, uh... Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna, I don't want, I just didn't like it. But I gave it a shot because, you know, I was caught up in that whole thing about, oh, we're gonna make uh, a lot more Shiba tokens and all that. And then whatever, you know, I was just, you know, whatever. I'm not thinking, not being smart. Um, I will not do that again. I will not stake anymore, no uh, anywhere. Either My recommendation is, my recommendation is keep it in your wallet and that's it and just go on the, uh, I invest, I, I, you know, that's my, that's just me, no, no financial advice here, but I would just invest on, the, um, on the value of it, and then, you know, of course, you know, like, with any other, uh, investment, you know, um, I, 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 I just been burned too many times with the staking, uh, a couple of, a couple of other, you know, I even have some, uh, other tokens that are worthless now that they're still in, a staking somewhere earning nothing <laughs> and so i was done with that so i and i thought this one was going to be go by go down by the wayside too but it has run up pretty good it came back from you know i, I one time i was at a loss and now it's uh doing much better uh, but this time around lesson learned um I, you know eventually there's gonna be a point where i'm just gonna have to i'm gonna catch it out and if I get back in on it, I'll wait till it drops again and get a certain amount. And, you know, uh, uh, one thing about crypto, unlike stocks, uh, buying and holding um, doesn't work well for a lot of these tokens. You have to really know when to get out. Uh, I think some of it is luck. <laughs> I hate to say it. Uh, I think the only one you, you can feel pretty confident about if you do own is bitcoin i'm gonna say it, it's just bitcoin i think bitcoin overall I, whether you own it or you buy it now or you buy it or you bought it five years ago there's still value in it there's still i feel if you bought it five years ago of course but if, even if you buy it now at, at this price and you know uh you want to buy it because it, first of all bitcoin the supply is a lot lower than ship so there is going to be, uh, especially now, of course, it's been happening for quite a while, maybe, and that's probably, and that is one of the reasons why it's, it's going up, because of the, all the institutional investors are getting in on it now. Well, they've been on it, but now it's, uh, I noticed that, like, when you go to the major, like, CNBC and, and um, Bloomberg and all that, now you, it's just uh, part of the uh, the ticker. You know, there was a time where they would show it every, every so often, the price but if it only went, uh, when it went up or if there was a a sell-off or something but now it's part of the uh the what they call the day the uh the the broad, the newscast so it's more like it's more mainstream than it was 10 years ago or even five years ago and even three years ago people i remember even three years ago uh, that was the, the, the Jamie Dimon statement when he said that, uh, he mentioned a stupid statement about, you know, investing something and it comes out of thin air. And now, you know, they all, you know, shut up about it. Now they all, now they're all in on it. I remember even Kevin O'Leary, he was another one. Yeah, you know, Poo Poo, uh, you know, 
cryptocurrency and all that. And now he's one of the biggest, uh, you know. So, you know. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. So overall, is is up to it was it, like I said, it was trading sideways for about a week, and now it's uh, going back up there. And uh, for me, the next thing is uh, cash out is gonna be bone. I'm gonna get uh, not cash out. I mean, just uh, take it out of staking. I still have that staking in there. And let me check my little portfolio here and see where we at there. And uh, let's see, not much going on. Yeah, okay, but it's looking good. Everything is all green. We, we like to see green. Okay, yeah, not much there. Okay. All right. Of course, AMP token is the one that I'm uh, still down by a lot. But um, at least hit the penny. <laughs> Finally, is that a penny? So, all right, all right, and of course the stocks here. Um, like I said, so we're gonna see tomorrow about the DWAC. Well, it's gonna be traded under because uh, it, it, this is the mer. Is it now that it merged? Uh, the new ticket symbol is gonna be DJT. And it's going to be trading in the NASDAQ. Uh, he did say something about the New York Stock Exchange. They wanted him to trade trade in the New York Stock Exchange. And he said no. <laughs> Which is funny. <laughs> he said, what am I do with New York? I don't blame him. <laughs> so. <laughs> All righty. Yeah. And then, of course, Chipotle is going to be, um, again, Chipotle is going to be doing a stock split. Well, it'll, uh, they're going to have the meeting in June 8th. And we'll see. It's going to get approved. I think it'll get approved. The uh, Okay, what is going on with the chart here? Okay, it's a little slow today. What's going on with this? Uh, and it's going to be 50, 50 to 1 split, which is great. <laughs> we already, we already, we already bought actually fractional share of the uh, Chipotle. Uh, so when it does split, we'll get a few whole shares. Uh, we did it through uh, what's it? TD was well, now it's Charles Schwab, and of course Charles Schwab has something called slices, which you can buy. Uh, selected stocks. I think it's uh, five hundred out uh, of uh, five hundred different stocks. To choose from now you can buy fractional shares on Charles Schwab so I think it's pretty cool I mean of course yeah my thing is these you know they should have done this a while back ago because uh, of course Robin Hood you can buy fractional shares in Robin Hood you can also buy fractional shares on stockpile uh, there's quite a few places you could buy fractional shares of Chipotle so you don't you know you know you know you don't have the money to buy one share of Chipotle which is right now at 29 44 uh, those days you can buy a fractional chair, uh, you know, could put a fixed amount, whatever, I put a hundred dollars, whatever. And then when it does split, uh, you'll be able to have at least, uh, you know, maybe a couple of shares of Chipotle with a little over a hundred dollars, who knows? And uh, depending on the price where it was, uh, before the, uh, split, what were, at what price print, uh, price point, excuse me. What the stock is going to be at. It might be higher. It might be lower than this. But um, yeah. And uh, and that's what that's, that's what's great about stock splits. It's a, it's a very good way to get into a stock. Not normally. Of course you cannot afford. Okay. And that brings me to another point. That somebody asked me the other day. And you know what? I'll talk about that for a few minutes. <clears throat> uh, for example, somebody was asking me about what is the PE thing and all that. So I'll I'll, I'll do I'll, I'll do I'll do a quick one. Eventually, I think I'll just do a video on all this. Uh, for example, um, let's look at the reading on this chart right here. Uh, let's look at Chipotle, right? Chipotle, the ticket symbols right there, CMG. That is the company name, Chipotle Mexican Grill. 
sector it is a consumer slick cyclical uh consumer cyclical okay industry it is a restaurant we all know that we all eat there i mean i eat, i eat there many times now the market cap is here that is how much the company is worth in terms of the uh overall value of the the, of the company you know so right now the uh chipotle is worth 79 billion 61 well, 70, 79.61 billion okay now the p /E ratio is is what they call it stands for price to earning ratio okay uh, when you have a stock that does the price is very high like this one for example is two thousand nine hundred two thousand nine hundred and three uh, point forty four dollars a share uh, you can see it's, it's in red. Okay. You know anything above when you look at when you look at a stock, if you want to invest in a, on a, on a uh, there's a whole bunch of variables when it comes to that. But when you look at at a at a at a, at a um, for example, anything over fifty. Price to earning ratio, it starts looking kind of. Basically, the stock is overvalued. That's kind of an indicator that the stock is way overvalued. The, the price is too high. And that's probably one of the reasons why they want, they're going to do the stock split. Because, you know, after they do the 50, 50 to 1 stock split, um, you know, you take that 29, uh, what is it, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I lost track here, 2903, divide that into 50, now the price of the stock is going to be a lot lower, it's going to be probably, if you round it off, off the top of my head, I don't have, I'm not going to go on a calculator right here, you know, give or take $58, whatever, uh, now, compare $58 a share with their earnings, the P ratio is going to look more attractive, it's going to be down to... It'll probably be like in the green. It'll probably be like under, you know, 10 or 20 PE ratio. Uh, some people look at that. You know, I look at that. If the P, if the price to earning ratio is way too high, that's an indication that the price is, is, is overvalued and you might want to not get in on that stock at that moment. You know, maybe wait till it drops. And it's also a sign that the company is, you know, I don't want to say it's not in the best, con I, not, not, you know, it's just, a, a lot of it is overvalued. Um, this was like during the dot-com boom. There was companies that the P ratio was three, uh, to triple digits. Like, I, 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 you know, we're going way back, like uh, 24, 24, uh, 24, 24, 25 years ago, around year 2000. Uh, for example, uh, uh, a famous company everybody probably heard of even back then, even if you're, you wasn't born yet, was Pets.com. Pets.com. Uh, this was a, one of those websites. Anything that had a dot .com in it, uh, the price shot up. The stock price shot up, but uh, basically they had no cash. They had, uh, they didn't even make a profit, things like that. Their P-E ratio was ridiculous. And, but people were buying on it. And so, you know, you have to, when you're looking at a, a long-term investment, something like that, um, you have to pay attention to the P-E ratio. For example, the number one stock right here is Berkshire Hathaway, right? Berkshire Hathaway, even though the stock is expensive, it is a solid company. A P-E ratio also tells you that the company is very solid. Okay, so in this case, Berkshire Hathaway, Class A, okay, uh, is financial diversified. Insurance is insurance diversified, but actually be, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, is, uh, they invest in a lot of companies. They have they own a lot of different, uh, a lot of companies, different stocks and a lot, you know. Their market cap is $892 billion. Okay, 
So, you know, almost a trillion dollar market cap. Now look at the stock price, $619,500 a share. So almost $620,000 a share. Uh, but look at the P-E ratio. It's 9.3. So you see, when you see a P-E ratio like that, it tells you that the company is, even though the, the stock price is way up there, it is is not overvalued because um, you know I mean you know I've been following uh, Berkshire Hathaway for a very long time and I don't know why I'm getting all this text now my phone is about to here we go my phone is about to blow up okay yes I know uh, yes Google I told them to yes 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 thank you Google thank you for checking up on me Google. Okay, so when you see something like that, P ratio uh, is under, you know, like under 10, that's pretty good. I'll give you another example uh, right here. Let's see, what are we trying? Number 18, right? SMCI, Super Micro Computer Incorporated Technology, Computer Hardware. Market cap is 61 billion, right? 61.06 billion. But the P ratio is 81.51. Okay. And the stock is uh, $1,042 a share. Now, I don't know much about this company. Um, I don't know much about it, Supermicro. Yeah, actually, I do. Yeah, what am I saying? I do. Oh, yeah, Supermicro. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, Supermicro. Uh, Chinese servers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know them as. Okay, Super Micro, the Chinese. Uh, I don't have any Super Micro servers. I have HP server, Dell server. Yeah, Super Micro. Actually, this box is Super Micro. I opened it up. I think it's uh, this one, the Sophos. Yeah, so I do have a Super Micro. So they make, uh, you know, rack, rack mounted stuff. Um, but their PE ratio is 81. So if I were to be looking at stocks to buy, I would pass on that one. You know, especially in the technology sector, there's a whole bunch of other technology stocks that I would look at. That I would pick before I would pick Supermicro. Because like I said, I didn't even know who they are, but I forgot. I do know who Supermicro is. So Supermicro, is they're like a budget. Uh, I want, when you buy HP server, a Dell server... Uh, very high quality control type thing. Super Micro, it is good quality control, but Super Micro is considered like the budget uh, server, server, you know, uh, you know, rack mount server hardware. It's kind of a you know the low budget rack mount stuff, and it's basically I opened it up. It's not you know it's, it's a lot of you know. Uh, not the best uh, semiconductors in there, not the best uh, hardware, because it's budget. It's like uh, low-end servers. Okay. So as you see that example, it's an 881 P ratio. Another stuff we could look at is uh, let me see what a, what a good P ratio. Right here, uh, two uh, P ratio of two, two point zero four, is First Citizens Bank shares. Uh, First Citizens Bank, we all, I mean, we we know what First Citizens Bank, financial institution, is a regional bank. Okay, the market cap is twenty three point two eight billion. Okay, but the P ratio is two. Okay, two. So I'm gonna put my two. 2.04. The stock price is six, uh, $1,603.54. So, you know, that's something that if, it was, if you were investing in the bank sector, uh, those type of, you know, that is a, a you know, it's a solid P ratio. Another one right here is a White Mountains. White Mountains Insurance Group. Take us in with WTM. Insurance Property and Casualty. Uh, market cap is four billion, four point five six billion. 
P ratio is nine. So that is a solid P ratio that so that's why I think that Chipotle, you know, even though and their and their volume is okay for a price for a stock that high. But I think what's gonna happen now, not when the price when the stock split, when it go when it gets to fifty to one split, the stock is gonna be a lot cheaper to afford. That volume is gonna go way up. It's gonna be a, a actively more actively traded stock. And by the way, that's what volume means. Uh, people, because somebody was asking me that, what all these, all these things mean. So volume is the number of amount the stock traded, and it traded, you know. So of course, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, very light volume. When I mean light volume, is it sixteen thousand? That's not a lot of that's not a heavy volume. Plus, it's a very expensive stock. <laughs> not many people are gonna buy, it. and you cannot buy that. That's one of the few that you can well, actually. I don't know. I think that's the only one you cannot buy. That's uh, fracture. I think that one is closed. I believe it's kind of a closed. Because uh, uh, I looked at just trying to buy that one fractional. You can't. There is no way you can even buy a fractional share. It's not. It's not available for fractional share. And then of course the seaboard is. Uh, I did buy some. I did buy seaboard fractional though. Uh, Seaboard, of course, is three thousand two hundred and three dollars and twenty-one cents a share. Volume is very light on that one. It's only two thousand seven hundred and thirty-four uh, traded hands. And the market and the market cap on Seaboard is three billion, three point one one billion. And the P ratio on that one is okay. It's uh, it's actually you know, it's, it's below fifty, so it's okay. Because remember, anything below fifty is okay. Anything. Uh, you know, anything, especially 15, 15 is okay. It's good. So, and I'm actually hoping that that one, when they will split. And that one is a conglomerate, uh, but they do a lot of things. They do, um, I think it's meat packing, uh, shipping. They do a whole bunch of, it's a conglomerate. And the work conglomerate means that they are invested in many or quite a few different industries. Like, remember General Electric, when it first came up, it was just an appliance. And with General Electric, General Electric is a good example of a conglomerate. General Electric makes jet engines. Okay, they make aircraft, jet engine. They also make trains. They make, uh, you know, diesel engine trains. They also make appliances. So General Electric is on everything. And General Electric also, uh, there was a time where they owned NBC. Remember when they bought out NBC? Was it NBC? Yeah, NBC. Yeah, NBC. So, so General Electric is a good example of a conglomerate. A conglomerate is a company that buys, that has many different industries. They're all over the place. And I remember even, uh, also General Electric also has healthcare. Healthcare equipment. They make all types of healthcare equipment. So not only they make appliances, like for example, televisions, uh, Microwaves, toasters, uh, General General Electric is everything. Radios, you know we all, you know, uh, remember the G Super Radio. So General Electric makes a lot of things. So that's an example of a conglomerate. So they have a lot of things. They also make uh, medical equipment. I guess the healthcare. Uh, I think for a while they went to lending, and they sold that part off. They sold off the media, the uh, when they had when they, they had on NBC for a while, they finally sold it off to uh, I believe it was a uh, Universal. Was it Universal? You know, and of course their stock uh, did a reverse play because I had uh, uh, I had I forgot how many shares it was. It was over sixty shares. Of General Electric, and after the reverse stocks, I was down to eight. It was uh, hated. It was uh, when they did that one to increase the price of the stock. So that was the opposite. And hello, Tassel. I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> Good to see you. I've been on for 44 minutes now. Uh, I went over the um, Donald Trump. Uh, 
the appeal that you got approved, and I went over that. And then, of course, the stock is going to be trading tomorrow. The Donald Trump uh, stock. With the uh, let me just, I'll just go for it real quick. So of course Donald Trump won the uh, well he lowered you know they got to lower the bond to one one hundred and seventy five million. So that is doable. He has ten days to uh, post that. So no Letitia James uh, padlocking the Trump Tower. It's not gonna happen. Sorry Felicia, not gonna happen. And then um, of course that led to yeah you know, he I guess he had such a good day. He had such a good day that the stock went up 35%. This is the stock that, this is a company that, that is going to merge with um, True Social, which is his social network. So on the good news on that, the stock went up 35%. So he's a richer man today. So not only he has to pay that bond, but he's a lot richer. Uh, they were talking about he after the merger he's gonna have over three billion dollars worth of the the stock. He actually is gonna be worth a lot more than that now if this price keeps going up. So uh, he's gonna be a lot richer. So that bond, so that bond is gonna be like toilet paper for him. Basically, he's gonna be he's gonna wipe his ass with the with the one hundred thirty five million dollars. There goes the PG rating Boom! out the window. <laughs> you only get it here first, folks. Danny Finance, say it like it is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so 35, uh, 35% just on that today. So, <laughs> and uh, man just keeps winning. <laughs> Oh my God! The liberals are going crazy today. Oh my God! So, you know, I can tell you that they're going crazy. <laughs> and of course, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, let me check the price on Bitcoin. Every you know, uh, cryptocurrency uh, rallying today. And uh, let's see, sixty-nine thousand. So it's right there, right below seventy thousand. Bitcoin, so but it was trading sideways for about a week. So now, uh, you know, everything goes up. Beep. So they're doing well today. Everybody's happy today. And then, of course, I was talking about uh, the P ratio. Because uh, somebody asked me about the P ratio. What is the P ratio? What is all this stuff here? So, uh, so for example, Chipotle. Uh, as you can see, the P ratio is 65, which is very high. So that is a reason why they're probably going. They're, they're doing the stock split. And when you see a P ratio over 50, you know I, I re, I'm going to recap real quick for you because you know since you're here, uh, when you have a P ratio over 50, uh, it's kind of an indicator that your price, your the, it means that the company could be way overvalued. Because the, 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 when I was talking about Donald Trump, about billionaires, uh, I'll give you an example. When they, they post, when the bond was originally four hundred and fifty-five million, um, over the over the last couple of weeks or so, a lot of uh, people are interviewing billionaires. A lot of billionaires can tell you they don't have five hundred million dollars in cash available. A lot of it is leverage. A lot of it is assets. For example. You know, in Donald Trump's case, right? He's a billionaire, but a lot of it is real estate. That's his, uh, you know. Uh, of course, now, true social. is social media. He's now is going to be worth, you know. So not only his real estate, uh, true social. So, you know, an asset is anything you have. When you did, when they determine the, when they determine the net worth of somebody, they're gonna look at your what property you own. Uh, if you have any stock investments or you know uh, anything anything tangible, uh, gold, uh, you know any type of equipment that's not you know not cars really, but yeah, cars too. Depending on you know, especially if it's a uh, you know. Card that can appreciate in value. 
Um, everything ties up to your net worth. A business. Anything like that. So, you know, when they were in, when they interviewed like Elon Musk and they said, you know, not many people in the world can come up with $500 million cash. Only a handful of people can actually get $500 cash right away. And he's not one of them. He's not one of He said he has. He had $500, $500 million. I say $500. Excuse me, $500 million in terms of cash. Uh, not many people in the world can do that. I'm to, we're talking about Mark Cuban, Kevin O'Leary. They all say, no, it, it's not many people can do that. Very, very, you know. And then in his case, they didn't want to secure his bond because it's real estate. Now, you know it and I know it because you live in New York. I live in Yonkers, New York. You live in New York City. That... Real estate is crazy. Real estate goes up and down. Just because you own a building, just because you own buildings, well, he owns more than a few buildings. Uh, real estate can, uh, it's very, uh, in, in his case, uh, the bondholders didn't want only real estate. Because uh, real estate is one of those things that is highly leveraged. Okay? It's very, very leveraged type thing. I'll give you an example. i give you an example. Yeah, he's probably, like I say, he's one of the few. Bezos, Elon Musk, and maybe uh, Warren Buffett, and maybe a couple of other people, and that's it. Like I said, it's probably around this many people in the world that can probably uh, get 500 million like that. You know, with no trouble. <laughs> I should say that, with no trouble. And remember, he's running for president, so... I was saying it earlier that in 2016, when he ran for president, he spent a hundred million to become president. So you know that's hurting him in the pocket when it comes to, uh, you know, raising money to to beat this guy. So you know, of course, we all know that this is one of the goals was to bankrupt him so he can't run for president. But I won't get into all that in this channel. Uh, so anyway, the so P ratio. I'm going back to the the, the you know the, the, the stocks. So I that's one of the I think that's one of the reasons why. And then of course you know when you're when you when your stock is at twenty nine hundred or three, it's not as attractive to new investors. People that have like uh, people that want to put a hundred dollars on. Yeah, I got I got my Robin Hood. I got a hundred dollars. Where should I put my money in? After the stock split, you could buy Chipotle now. You could buy a couple of shares of Chipotle probably. At least. You know? You say, okay, now I can invest in, you know. Instead of putting a fractional share of Chipotle in, now you can actually say, I have one share of Chipotle. You know, two shares or whatever. <laughs> it's, also, it's always attractive to new investors. You know, to raise more cash. Even though that market cap is uh, almost eighty billion, uh, it would it definitely help. It'll definitely raise more cash, uh, and also, you know, uh, it's going to be a lot higher volume. Right now, it's it, it's uh, two hundred eighty-two thousand shares trading that traded that day. Of course, when the when the stock price is a lot lower, the volume is going to be a lot higher. It's going to be a lot more trading. It'll probably be one of the most active stocks. For example, if we go on volume, excuse me, let's see which is the, the most heavily traded stock uh, t today was uh, this one, right here, uh, penny stock, five cents a share, uh, 290 million shares traded hands, so that's a very active traded stock. And, you know, of course, you know, it's a penny stock. That's five, it's five cents a share. <laughs> Market cap is $4.7 million. So it's not a very, it's a very small company. So it's actually EV. Uh, yeah, EV. It looks like an EV. The next Ego, okay, that looks like an EV, auto manufacturer. Yeah. And you got Nick, Nicola, okay. 
Tesla's right here, number seven. 80, what is it? 83 million, 83 million shares uh, traded. Excuse me, no, no, no. 73 million, excuse me, I'm on the wrong one. 73.8 million, okay. I, my head is, my big head is in the way. Let me go, let me go right. I'm trying to fix it right here. Okay, Tesla, there we go. So Tesla's right here. So as you can see, the volume is at 73.888,000. Okay. And you look at the P-E ratio. Remember we're talking about P-E ratio? That one is 40. 40 point. Because the stock price right now is what? 172. 172.63 dollars a share. And the market cap is 549 billion or a half a trillion. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Market cap. I believe Apple's the uh, which is the richest company right now? Largest largest company market cap is who? I think it's Apple. No, it's Microsoft. And you mentioned NVIDIA. NVIDIA is number three in terms of market cap. NVIDIA is at 2.3 trillion. Okay. Microsoft is 3.1 trillion market cap. So you see the pre you see the price to earning ratio on NVIDIA? 79.59 because NVIDIA price right now is what $950 a share. So I think um eventually um Maybe it'll be a split, but they're actively traded stock too. Fifty-four million shares traded, so it's actively traded stock. So let me read some of the comments here. Uh, Tassel. Okay, I'm trying to find my mouse here. What is wrong with me? Uh, Tassel just finished some some assignments from uh, my class. I noticed he was on. Uh, thank you for having here. I had to talk about the stock price for specific stock in one of my clients I chose in NVIDIA. Yeah, of course, he had good news today. He's doing really well with that, yeah. How's Reddit? Uh, let's check. We can check Reddit. Let's check Reddit. Uh, I'm going back over here and check Reddit. Let me see what can I ticker. Uh, ticker symbol is RDDT, right? Reddit. So Reddit is right there. 59.80. So let's look at the chart. Yeah, so it's up again. It's up again. Because remember, it opened, uh, it opened at 34. The IPO price was 34. And then that day, I think it went up to $49. Was it $49 the last time I, I was? So $59. So today is a, 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 so today it went up to $59.80. So it's going up. Reddit is going up. Okay. So there you go, Reddit. Uh, Reddit. And look at the numbers here. Of course, it's a, you know, it's an IP also. You know, it's all new. You're not going to, you know. And uh, market cap is nine billion, nine point five billion market cap. Okay, so there you go. No PE ratio yet because of course it's still early. You know they just started a few days ago. So there you go. So that's Reddit. Yeah. Yeah, it's doing pretty. It's doing. It's doing good. It's doing. Yeah. So 59 minutes in the books, and uh, I can't tell who's watching, not only you. Uh, I need to put the widget on my, um... anyway, I'm trying out this new webcam. This is another Logitech webcam. I just got it today. I decided to come on and, and try this webcam. This isn't the old Chinese webcam. Now I'm going to, now this one's going to go in the boiler room. <laughs> so now I have one upstairs in the second floor. Of course, I have this one. And the Chinese one is going to go to the boiler room. <laughs> and, of course, I had to turn off my pump in here, too, because, I, of course, I had a little puddle right here, too. 
as you can see right there, another puddle. I turned off the pump, but it's okay, you know. Uh, it's it, it it slowed it down a little bit. I still got work to do in the front. I still have to. Uh, I have other work to do in the front. Okay, so you see, okay, yeah, yeah. I that's why I really don't say anything about it because uh, you know, that's why I, it's weird. It's weird that this channel has uh, what seven hundred and uh, I just I just went over seven hundred. Uh. I think the most I ever had on this stream. Well, I don't. There's only been my fourth stream. You know, it's it's, it's still early. You know, it's, uh, I have to find a, a, a an audience. It takes time. I have, I, you know, I have I have few subscribers. Yeah, I have some that I you know my comments and all that. Uh, I have some that on my other channel, and they say, "Oh yeah, you talk about money and uh, yeah, yeah." I posted that short. Was it? Uh, Saturday night, late Saturday, yeah, that's when the water was really coming in, no, now it's off, I turned it off, so it, 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 it's trickling in a little bit, fills it up a little bit, so, but now it's, it's slow down, so, but it kept up with it, you know, my, my thing is that, um, it could, it could have been a lot. A lot of people, uh, they they get like up to their knees underwater. It doesn't happen like that. I only get that. It comes in from there, and I get a little spot over here, and that's it. So I can't complain, you know. It's just that uh, these things are going to happen, you know. Is the weather always going to be like this? No, there's going to be a time where it's going to slow down in the rain, and I'm going to say, oh, man, we have a drought. I wish we had more rain. Right now, we're getting too much rain. That's the problem. We're getting... It's, it's, you know, it's not only rain. It's that we're getting like a, or anything over two inches all the time, which is not you know it's too much. It's just too much. So you know, and it's just I I know I I know it because it's not only happening to me. It's happening to a lot of people. It's not that it's happening only to me. You know, you see it all over the news. These people, uh, if you, especially if you, you live, you live near a, a river, then that river overflows. That's the problem, and that's the same thing here. Like it's not during the rain that I get the water. It's not during the rain. It's after the rain stop. It's after the rain stop. That water still has to come down from the hill and all that. It still has to go. It has to. It comes down from the hill. It goes through my house, and then it goes down the block. So I'm in the middle of it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it comes through me, and then I have to send it out down the street. That's what happens. So it's a double-edged sword. You know, I get a nice view of the backyard. I got trees and all that. It's beautiful. Like today, today I was bird watching. Today I actually was standing outside for a few minutes, and I was bird watching. I was bird watching. I should have made a video on it. Maybe I'll make a video on it next time. I saw a blue jay, a beautiful blue jay. I was like, wow, look at the blue jay. You know? And then there was another one I saw, a cardinal. Beautiful red cardinal. And it's in my backyard. They're in my backyard. I got these beautiful, or oriole. There was an oriole by the fence. I'm like, man, look at these beautiful birds. So, you know, these type of, this is what I get. So for me, you know, yeah, the the trade-off is I have a nice little area where I can sit there and, you know. Yeah, exactly. I can hear them sing. I hear the owls. You know, I have owls. I can hear them. I never see them, but I have owls. I have uh, floating, uh, flying above me sometimes. They, they, they. I have, uh, like, fal falcons. I can, see he I can see them gliding up there looking for, ready to dive down and grab a rodent or something. I have falcons. I have all types. Geese. I have geese. I have, you know, geese, Canadian geese up here. They fly right over me. You can hear them. Uh, the other thing I don't have here is uh, the other day I'm walking down the block and I see a skunk right in front of me and I, I had to slow down. I almost ran into the skunk. I was going to the store and I saw a skunk right, he, right in front of me. He ran right in front of me. He's coming out of the parking lot, and I'm in the curb, and I'm walking. I see him. I thought it was a cat. 
I thought it was a cat. It was a freaking skunk. And he just looked at me and I looked at him and I backed up and he just went across the street. Because I guess people throwing out trash. It was trash across the street. And I'm going to the store and I'm walking and I'm, you know, but I, I don't, I, 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 when I walk, I try to be cautious anyway. Because they do come out of, so I thought it was a cat. And he turned around and looked at me and I saw, I noticed the, the shiny black, beautiful white tail. I said, oh no, that's a skunk. And then when I saw his face, I said, oh yeah, he's a skunk. And he looked at me and he just kept going. <laughs> you know, so that's the beauty about it. Yeah, do I, I got to put up with these things. Yeah. But you know why it's worth it in terms of like, you know, I didn't have this in the Bronx, you know. Raccoons. I get raccoons. I have raccoons here. I have uh, I have a bunch of cats. They go through my backyard. I'm beautiful. I'm going to make a video. I have Sanjay's channel. You see... In my, my wife's son's channel, there's a few videos with the cats. My wife was shooting in the backyard and the cat just ran by. On my wife's channel, my son, my wife, make my wife runs the channel more than she's the she's the uh producer of that channel. So so there she filmed me and the cat is right there. Uh, it's like seven cats. We have about three or four cats that pass by it. Uh, I, I think one, uh, you know, they're not all straight. They're from different houses. Like, there's a beautiful black cat that's from this house. Nice, beautiful collar with a little bell. Diggy, diggy, diggy. Beautiful black cat. It reminds me of a, uh, of a cat that I used to, uh, when I was when I was a lot younger, we had a Siamese cat. And, you know, Siamese cat was, uh, I, uh, you know, long story short, the Siamese cat was, uh, Killed by a neighbor's dog. Yeah, that pigeon wasn't. Um, yeah, she zoomed in out. That pigeon was when we went to Stu Leonard's. He was, you know, Stu Leonard's is a, when you walk in, they're still outside a little bit, it's a hangar. He was right above the uh, looking down on us. So she zoomed in with the uh, phone and he's giving the, the side eye. <laughs> Yeah, so it was, he was the only pigeon there. It was a, and he was just flying around there while my son was eating ice cream. You know, when you walk into Sue Leonard, they have the ice cream shop right there. I don't know if you've ever been to Sue Leonard. So right there, there's an ice cream. Ice cream. So he's right there, right above the, you know, like it's a little barn type house. It looked like. He's right there on top, looking down on everybody. So... <laughs> So that's what she is. My wife is very good with video, video. She's a good, she, she, my wife is very good with video stuff. She, she picks up a lot of the little things like that and she makes it into a video and uploads it and they do really well. You know, she, she's having fun with that channel. She does these uh, videos like that. When I met her, she was the one I told, she was the one, I was not the video recording type person when we met. I was really a photographer type guy. She's the she was the she was the one that got me to like taking more pictures and more video and all that. And then when I started my channel, you know, because every time we travel, we just go somewhere. Danny, record this. Go record that. I'm I'm, I'm sitting there. She's driving. I'm like, I don't want to record right now. Come on, come on, look at it. Just put the camera out there. Put, put the phone out there. You know. You know. She's very good at that. Me, I'm not so spontaneous when it comes to video. <laughs> but now that she's uploading them, I see people like that stuff. You know, she's always recording all these uh, different angles and all these weird things and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the thick of it. Yeah, I love it. So, so we like some of the birds that hear them singing. Yeah, exactly. Cause that's one thing. When I first moved here, um, you know, that's the first thing I hear, especially around this time, in the springtime. Right now, everything is blooming. I can hear the uh, owls. I hear them, and it's beautiful. I have wood woodpeckers over here too. Woodpeckers. It's one particular tree up there is you can tell it's very. 
Uh, you can tell a lot of a lot of woodpeckers hit. There's one tree that the woodpeckers love to hit. Out of all the trees, there's one tree. And you hear brr, 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 the woodpecker. No, I I, mm, I I suggest that she should do that. And but we want to work on the kitchen first. We want to we, we're, we're in the process of remodeling the kitchen. I guess once we, re, we remodel the kitchen. Then she can shoot. Right now the kitchen is, is horrible. It's just, it's a, you know, it's a mess. Someday she she might want to do her cooking thing. But right now it's a, she's having fun with this channel and it's doing very well. We have two hundred and uh, and last time I checked, I think it's over two hundred and thirty something, uh, about two thirty eight, one hundred and sixty four thousand views, over a hundred videos. You know, it's doing very well. I said, you know, I told her, you know, at the pace you're going, you're going to hit a thousand subs by next year. By this time next year, it'll be over a thousand subs. Because, you know, it's one of those channels that people just gravitate to watch shorts. That's why I'm trying different things. You know, like the, you see, like my radio ch channel. You see, like, my radio channel is okay. It's a niche thing, but it's a niche thing. You know, that's why I like to do this channel, the finance channel, talk about money, whatever. And anybody want to join in, feel free to join in. And then I have my other channels that I'm having for the the, the uh, diecast. I'm going to shoot a video. Most likely tonight I'll do it. I was going to do it, but I was running the, the, the pump, so I couldn't do it. It was too noisy. I'm probably going to do it tonight or definitely tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot that video. It was a Dollar General. I'm not Dollar General. Family Dollar. I went to a Family Dollar nearby here and I bought some cars. Yeah, I got a good deal on some stuff, so. And, of course, I ordered a few more things. They, 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 I ordered them from AliExpress. That should be here soon. I ordered that cheap antenna. The cheap Yagi. I ordered that. That's going to take a couple of weeks to get here. <laughs> the cheap Yagi. So, you know, I'll be back sun Sunday. I'm going to do the, the radio channel. I was going to do it yesterday, but I was too busy doing other stuff. Uh, I said, you know what? I'm gonna, and then, Because I, I know next Saturday. Let me see. Let me look at the calendar. Uh, next Saturday. Let me go look over here. Let me do this one. Oh, no. Not next week. Oh no! So not not this week. The the week after. I thought Jules was gonna be on this Saturday, but he's not. He's gonna be on the week after. Oh, okay. So maybe I'll be on Saturday. I don't know. The weather permitting, let's see how the weather is. Because I'm gonna I need to be I, I I'm gonna be working outside too a lot. I'm trying to take it take take advantage of these cooler days. All these outdoor projects you want to do them before July. Once July hits, it gets hot. And I don't want to be out there in July and August working on stuff. So I want to be done like by June. By June, I want to be, be done with all these projects that I have here. So I have now April, May to do as much as I can. And try to catch up on all these projects before June and July come. Because plus we might go somewhere uh, a few days here or whatever type thing. We're traveling here and there. Not far, but you know. And now I can't even be announcing it now because I don't want no freaking, uh, you know, squatters. Yeah, you can't tell people around your neighborhood if you're leaving for a long time. I mean, my brother my brother lives with us and he watches the place. And I have, you know, I said I have, I have a lot, I have security system and all that. But still, you know, um, you can't tell people that you're going away for uh, a certain amount of time because people break into your house. The squatter thing is crazy now. The squatter thing is crazy now with, uh, you know, if you leave and they come and they break into around the corner, there's squatters. There's a, there's a house that's around the corner that's boarded up. Now, I guess they're trying to sell the house or I don't know what happened. And every so often, I see the, the the door. You know, they put a big wood board. Somebody pried it out, and it's open. And they've been dealing with that for over a year. There were people living there, and one day they came and boarded up the house. 
So apparently they were squatting in that house around the corner. I think it's a. Uh, I don't know if they're trying to sell the house. Uh, you know, one time, you know, years ago, we thought about, you know, there was a house up here. But I kept telling them, oh, no, I don't want to buy, buy no house in New York. We're not, we're done. We're, we're, I think we're going to start. Uh, well, we'll see. I think in my mind, it's going to be like a five or six year plan coming up soon. And I think that's going to be it for me. I think by the time I hit my uh, social security collecting, I'm not going to wait till 65. Uh, 62, I'm done. I'm going to, I want to collect. You know, yeah, I work on the side, but I want to collect. I want to collect too. And hopefully by then, I, I'll collect and I'll be doing this and collecting. <laughs> That'll be my retirement plan for now. <laughs> Along with other stuff, of course, but just saying. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want, I, I think, I think now in, uh, we'll see what happens in November. No matter what, I think the, my New York days are going to be numbered in a couple of more years. I mean, I left the city. I'm glad, I, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad, because my neighborhood, I don't recognize my block. Uh, my old block, I don't recognize it now. And there's a, I, there's still a couple of people that are still there from when I was growing up. They're still there, a couple of people, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a good thing is some uh, at least uh, the appellate judge came to the senses and they lowered his bond. So, because that's ridiculous, four hundred and fifty-five million, whatever, it's ridiculous. You know, at least now, you know, you know, because it, it I, honestly would have been uh well, you know, uh, it, it, anyway, I don't want to say anything about that because we, you know, hope, I pray, I pray for the man's safety. For these people are crazy. I pray for his safety. That's all I can say. And if people don't have to agree with me on that, and that's fine. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, I was gonna talk about this on my Danny show, but I'll talk about it right now. Planet Fitness boycott. Uh, I used to go to Planet Fitness, believe it or not, twenty years ago. Twenty years ago, I used to go to Planet Fitness. Uh, obviously, I don't go there now. Hence, belly. Um, you couldn't pay me to go there. I didn't like it back then. I, I'm not a fan of gyms. When I was in my, when I was in the best shape, I used to work out at home. For two reasons: one, I don't got to pay monthly fee. The biggest one, I don't have to wait on somebody using a machine. And three was some people sweat; they sweat all over it. You have to wipe it down and all that. Some people don't wipe the machine down. Some people sweat so much that the machine, even if you wipe it down, it's just, ew. you know, and, 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 and just, uh. so I, I used to, you know, I had a, I had a weight bench. I have my, uh, uh, not an elliptical. I never owned an elliptical. I had a, you know, exercise bike, like the one I sit, the one that I don't use here. But I used to play a lot of sport. That's how I stood in shape. I used to play a lot of basketball, uh, you know, in the neighborhood basketball, that type of thing. Uh, softball. I, I, I love softball. Yeah, yeah, it is horrible. It's horrible. So when I went to the gym, it was okay, but I just didn't, you know. And, and that's 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. Now, with this whole, you know, what happened with this particular boycott, Planet Fitness. What happened was, there's a, a, a man went into the woman's locker room. Because he, he's claiming he's a transgender. So, I guess the, the woman in the locker room was filming him. I think he was shaving his legs or something. So, she posted that. So, Planet Fitness revoked her membership. Because of that. And you know. They revoked the membership. Now they revoked the membership on the grounds that. You're not supposed to film other people in the gym. And then post it. Which I agree. I agree with that. You know you shouldn't do that. 
She could have just talked about it without posting it. Because there is a policy that you cannot post other, you cannot post people working out, and you, you know there's a privacy thing there, which is true. But again, now what what pisses me off is this whole trying to satisfy, you know, the less than one percent. I mean, we're talking about zero point zero. I mean, excuse me, point. Zero 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 one percent of your client base. You know, uh, you know, um, there's women in that locker room. Uh, you know, I when I went to the gym, in my case, I never used a shower. I never did all that because I, I, I wasn't walking distance from my the gym that I used to go to. I was walking distance, so I didn't take a shower at the gym. Uh, uh-uh, I wasn't doing all that shit. PG ready out the window. Sorry. I wasn't doing that. When I would work out at the gym, I walk home, I take care of all that at home. You know, wash up, whatever, you know what I mean? Take you know, take your shower, whatever. I would do that at home. I never did that at the gym. I was never I'm not comfortable with using a, a shower in the gym cuz you don't know what the hell you're going to get in there. You don't know uh, the shower the floor, you don't know you're going to get fungi, who knows what else? Uh, who knows what's in the water, the uh, mist in the water, whatever, you know. I remember growing up about Legionnaire's disease. You know, if anybody don't know what Legionnaire's disease, look it up what Legionnaire's disease is. A lot of Legionnaire's disease come from what? Water. Whether it's a hot tub, a pool, a fountain, it's usually airborne, fine mist. And people get infected with Legionnaire's disease. And Legionnaire's disease is deadly. Okay? I knew about this as a kid. Because I used to see this in the news. Okay? So I knew about Legionnaire's disease. So I always had that. You know, I was always the germaphobic type guy. When I went to the gym and I saw, you know, the... uh, you know, people wiping down the machine with alcohol, spray alcohol and uh, paper towel. I was like, I said, you know, I, I didn't really, you know, it kind of really, and then my wife would tell me that too. And she, you know, why you go to the gym? You know, this is, I said, you know what, you're right. It's kind of nasty. So Legionnaire's disease is very, uh, could, you know, and I heard about that because, you know, they, they named it after American Legion. The original outbreak, I think, was in the early 70s or something. I forgot. I don't know if it's not my head. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, people. Whatever. So that's why I was never crazy about going to a gym. So, of course, fast forward all this 2024 stuff. And, of course, the pandemic. Uh, you know, now you, your business is on a razor thin margin. Now you want to alienate people by introducing this trans nonsense you know this woke stuff so i so somebody posted on tiktok about that so i agree with them i liked it their video and i put a comment and i wrote boycott planet fitness you go woke you go broke that was my comment and i reposted the video that video has gotten over a thousand likes since yesterday and I had over a hundred comments on that. And a lot of them were, you know, calling me names. Calling me all types of names. You know, like, uh, you know, I'm not going to say all the names. It's stupid. And people, you know, people will say, oh, you know, you know, like, no. You know what? You know, what if your daughter was in that locker room? You know, they don't, they don't think about that. Maybe they don't care. You know, you understand, a lot of these people don't have kids. A lot of these people that, you know, say that it's okay to have a man in a woman's locker room uh, is okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. And then and then we're also talking about, you know, uh, you know, there's young girls that go to Planet Fitness. I know there's an age limit. But you're going to have this disgusting man in the woman's locker room. You know, it's about protecting women. It's not about whether the guy... You know, listen, uh, trans people out there, whatever, I don't care. 
You you want to do whatever you want to do. That's fine. That's your business. But when you start imposing, and you go to a woman's locker room or girls' locker room, now you're violating their privacy. That's why you I draw the line. I draw the line on that. You understand? That's disgusting. And Planet Fitness should have said, you know what? Instead of uh, revoking this woman's thing, she should have said, you know what? They should have talked because he did it again. Somebody else uh, filmed him. And he's still going in there shaving his legs and shaving whatever else. Or, you know, whatever. And, you know, his new, the same Planet Fitness, he's still doing. They still haven't gotten rid of him. Because they're afraid of two things. One, they're afraid they're going to get out, uh, you know, culture canceled. By who? A minority of people. A handful of people. You know, this is a stupid business model. Okay, again, people, this is I know it's a Danny Finance, but let's talk about business. If you run a business, if you run a business, why would you want to alienate your biggest customer base? Which is male, your heterosexual male, heterosexual female. That's it. We don't care about the everything else in between. I don't care about it. One of the few places you have left to, you know, they ruin sports. Everything. Everything is ruined. One of the few things I would have left to do is go to the gym and work out and, you know, not think about all the stuff that's going on in the world. And now you go into that gym and you got to deal with this bullshit. You know, especially as a woman. You know, as a woman. A woman has to go in there. And now she got to see this gross person shaving their legs or whatever. Who knows what the hell they're doing in there. You know, it's it's it's, it's disgusting. And Planet Fitness, shame on you. And I hope, you, I hope they, they do go out of business. You know, I hope they do. I, I hope, you know, it's not... I, and, I, and, I, and I got a lot of comments about that. A lot of comments were like, well, you know, uh, you, they boycott, the, uh, they, you know, Bud Light is back in business. Back, Bud Light still selling beer. That's not the point, bro. You know, they think that, you know, boycott is going to, you know, it's not going to bankrupt them. But you got to, you know, companies need to understand that when you do stuff like this, you, 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 you know, you, you pandering to a small minority, a small minority of people. So you want to inconvenience everybody else because a small minority of people. That's not a smart business model. It's not. You know, what? They, the proper thing they should have done is they should have told the person, the transgender person, you cannot use the woman's locker room. That's it. If they want to take them to court, then you take them to court. Let them do that. Or, if me, for example, me, I would have been, if I would have been the franchise owner of that Planet Fitness, I would have had a separate male, female, and I would have the uh, the in between, whatever you want to call it. Not a family room. I still will have a family room because they have also a family room, like for you know when mothers want to take the. Well, in the Planet Fitness, not gonna because you don't take you can't take a baby in there anyway. But you know, like a family room, except there's gonna be the trans room. That's it. There's not going to be no... I'm not going to put up with that. You're going to go and... No, no. Because now... That's, things are going to happen in there. You're gonna, you, 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 you know what is it? Is that they worry about the trans lawsuit. You know what's worse than a trans lawsuit? A sexual assault lawsuit. A sexual harassment lawsuit. They, they got to wait until... They got to say... Are we going to get sued by the trans? Or God forbid... We're going to get sued... For a sexual assault. Which one is more serious? You see what I'm saying? So Planet Fitness should have said, you know what? I'm sorry, you cannot use the women's locker room. That's it. I don't care if you don't you don't think you're a biological male or whatever. You need to go to the male male, male locker room. Or you're not, you're gonna get revoked. And that's what they should have done. That's what they should have done. So of course people are commenting back to me about uh oh, you're you know anti this. No, I'm not anti anything, bro. You cannot shove that in people's faces. <clears throat> you know? I, I have a son. But I also have two daughters. They're a lot older. 
from a previous relationship. My daughter's a lot older. They're all grown up now. They're in their thirties. But you know, I I know they, they were my little girls. What I mean by that is, you know, you know, if if as a father, I just saw some punk ass going to a women's locker room. You better believe I'm gonna punch that guy in the face. I'm gonna say, what the hell are you doing? Why are you in here? I would have punched him in the face. I don't care. You know, that's it. I don't care. Because you know, you cannot impose. Same thing with the sports thing, you know, the sports thing. The men that play women's sports, they're just, just bullies. They just want to bully women. That's all it is. He's not being transphobic or this woke nonsense. It's common sense, okay? It's common sense. And that's the problem with this country. You know, we, we want to play. Everybody wants to, All these people want to be victims. They all got the victim label. Oh, my God. If you don't agree with me, it's because you're dysphobic. Oh, you hate this. So you no, I don't hate anything. It's just the pro, you know the problem is you. You're the problem. You're the problem. You go around wearing that victimhood badge, and you expect everybody to cater to you. And that doesn't life doesn't work that way. Life is not doesn't life doesn't work that way. You know, very on very early on in life. Well, uh, when you realize that you're not, you, you know, not everybody's gonna like you. That's a that's the first pill to swallow. <clears throat> and you know what? You're you know, I I you accept that. You say you know what? Everybody's gonna like you. That's fine. You're not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, or whatever, and that's fine. And when you accept that. You're gonna be in your little cliques, just like uh, when you're in high school. You know, everybody has a little. Uh, there's a table for the nerds. Or the geeks, whatever, you know, the smart people, the artists, uh, you got the uh, the the potheads over here, the druggies, the few, the, the criminals. You're gonna have the the jocks, the video game people over here. You're gonna have the, the you know, the the shoppers over here, the uh, materialistic girls over here. There's always gonna be in these groups that people, you know, and that's it. That's the way life is. You cannot put them all in one thing and think everything's kumbaya. It doesn't happen like that. Life is not like that. Sorry. And that happens within family. Not a, not all my brothers and sisters got a high school diploma. Not all my brothers and sisters got a degree. Not all my brothers and sisters are smart. <laughs> I'm going to say it. Not all my brothers and sisters are very technolo technological, uh, you know, smart and all that. I was the first one in my family to uh, use a computer. I did it very early. They all looked at me like I was, a, uh, you know, what, what is this guy using a computer? It's no use for a computer. There's no use for a computer. They were way behind. We're talking about 1980 something. And they were like, wow, using a computer. I can just do this by paper. I don't need to, uh, you know, do my counting on a computer. In fact, they didn't, do, they didn't do no accounting. Not even the concept of accounting. So, you know, you're dealing with all types of people that have very levels of, uh, you know, common sense, intelligence, level of education, uh, people that actually not only watch the news, but listen. <laughs> Not only look at videos, but listen to the content. And to take that with a grain of salt. Because, you know, you, they, you know, remember, there's always two sides to a story. So, like what happened the other day on my channel, my radio channel, you know. Uh, one person there said, I hope the AM band goes bad or out of business, uh, back, you know, goes away. Because his opinion, because his opinion is that, uh, you know, radio, AM radio is full of... Uh, Garbage, which is complete nonsense. You know, and this is the way lefties think. Lefties are all lefties think that it has to be their highway, their way or the highway, and that's it. And that's the problem. We have too many people in this in this country like that. Their way or the highway, you know. And that's why you know today was a good victory. Today was a good day. That's a long way to go, but today was a good day.
The appellate court came to their senses and they said, you know what? This fine is ridiculous. And they lowered it. Because, um, and let me tell you something, the damage already been done. Damage already been done because uh, even at this number, how many businesses are going to come to New York? And I guarantee even at that number, not, not many. Even at that number, they're saying, you know. Now, my opinion, what I think is going to happen is, you know, 10 days from now, of course, he's going to post it. And then during the appeal, when they really go through the whole case, I think the the, the case eventually is going to get dropped. It's going to get dropped. He has to he has to make it to the appeal first. Once they scrutinize the appeal, uh, this judge already been overturned at least five times. So I think eventually it's going to get dropped. And then he'll have his victory there. Unfortunately, it's one of a few because, you know, because I, I think that even after appeal, even during the appeal, they're going to say, okay, what is the long-term implications for this case? Even if it's $175 million. They have to think about that because, you know, like he always says it, and I tell people all the time, today is him, tomorrow it could be you. Okay, tomorrow could be you. Remember that. So when everybody, all the people are gloating about, oh, they want to see this guy's building padlock and all this nonsense. Again, in this state, today, you know, he's going through this today, whatever. Tomorrow going to be you. Uh, they're going to come and take your house one day. And, of course, we got all these stupid laws here. You know, in Florida, you cannot do the squatters thing over there. In some states, you cannot do the squatters thing. Uh, over here, unfortunately, what happened to that woman uh, a couple of weeks ago, she, you know, she changed the locks on her house, and they arrested her. And they told her, police said, we, there's nothing we can do about it. You need to take them to housing court. Housing court in New York City can take up to two years. So that house that she owns, that was inherited, you know, first of all, she's already going through, you know, traumatic experience in terms of her mother passed away. Now she has to go to her mother's old home and got to deal with this shit. With, with squatters in there. And they sided with the squatters. Now she has to pay a lot, all this, you know how much money it's going to cost to get rid of those people? Because, you know, uh, and and, and uh, there was like three of them. I think two of them left because the uh, vigilante team came by and told them, you stay here, you better watch your back. You know, it was like street 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 justice type thing. One of them is still there. He's the one that wants to go to court and everything. He's the one that said, no, if she wants me to leave, she needs to pay for all the repairs that I did in this house. So he's trying to get a money out of it. And that's what most people do when they do that squatting thing. A lot of them are trying to scam people out of money. It is unreal. It's crazy. And, you know, it's unfortunate. But, and this is a New York law. Not every state is like this. It's just New York, there's a handful of states that do this squatter's rights nonsense. So, now she's going to spend thousands of dollars going to court. Thousands of dollars is gonna cost her. While he's while he's getting legal aid, free uh, lawyer, he's getting legal aid, free lawyer, and all that. She has to pay out of her pocket to to get him out. So either she pays him off, or she goes to court and, and pays the lawyers and all that. All these fees, I know because I evicted a few people. It costs money. It's not cheap. Um, for, uh, fortunately for me in Yonkers, it only took two months. Two months. And it cost me about... Uh, I can tell you how much it cost me. I, I think I spent over $1,000. And I was lucky. I was lucky. And I had to deal with this guy for two months. I mean, I wanted to put him through a, a window. 
And I, I told you the story the other day. I, I could have folded him up into a plane and fling him out the window. Eventually, I did get my payback when I knocked him out two years later. <laughs> That's the same guy. It, you know, he's a but he, yeah, he's a he's scum. So this poor woman now has to, uh, to uh, one to two years dealing with this, because you know, of course, New York City is a backlog. Everything's a backlog of cases. <laughs> That's why um, my wife and I, you know, when we acquired this house, you know. Uh, at one time, we wanted to rent upstairs and, you know, income and all that. But now, it's not worth it because now, it happens to a lot of tenants. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm not saying all tenants. I'm saying, you know, people, there's red flags. You can find, there's, there's some tenants, there's a red flag where, you know, when they hit a certain age, like when they're over 50 and they haven't settled down with anybody and they work in paycheck to paycheck, so to speak. And they haven't done anything with their life. It's a red flag that the guy is not either he's uh he has a conviction in his past or you know he's not a trustworthy person or whatever. And it turns out my instincts kick in after a few months and I see. There's people that there's and a lot because it's a it's a it's a common thing that happens with a lot of it happened to us a few times and it happened trust me um you know when tenants when they move here they're like oh he said I'm gonna be quiet I'm not gonna bother nobody I got two months security here I got the current month plus three more months security uh you're not gonna pick you're not gonna hear people out of me uh whatever and then they move in. And you start seeing the the the, the 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 real person come out, and then three months later they have no more money, all the, the security run out, all the deposit run out, everything. So now the first thing coming out of their mouth is, "Oh, uh, I'm about to get laid off." Here comes the uh, violin. Oh, I'm about to get off. I need time to find another job. Blah 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 blah. And they already know. They already know that if you if you go, if you try to evict them, it's gonna cost you money. So you probably give them the benefit of that at first. You go okay, and that happened. That happened to one of the tenants that we had here. He was like that. Oh, I need I need time to find a job because uh, I'm playing the violin right now. The small world's smallest violin. <laughs> and uh, then he does find a job, but he's so far behind now. Because it's already been like a couple of more months or three months, whatever, he found a job. But now he's behind. He already exhausted his security deposits. Now he's behind three or four months. And then, oh, I'm going to catch up on it. Of course, he's never going to catch up on it. That's not his intention to. His intention is not to catch up to you. His intention is to milk it as long as he can until you finally get fed up and evict him. By that time... I, because as soon as he knows, as soon as he knows that he's gonna get evicted, he's really not gonna pay you anything. So by the time you evict him, he could have been there seven months or more. So, so he got to live in your house for almost a year, but he only paid about three months, maybe four months. And that's the, that's their plan, you see. So by the time you evict him, they've been there for almost a year. Or more, because depending on, on 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 you know, you know how much they can scam, the, you know, how how long they can string along the landlord. Now COVID, what happened with COVID was when COVID hit, those people that were borderline getting to evicted, they had to suspend all those evictions, so they had to stay. They could have they, they stood another year and a half. So imagine, and I had just got rid of them before COVID. Have COVID would have kicked in, I would have had to keep them for. Another year and a half. And then they had to pay me. So they would have been living up there for another year and a half. Uh, of course, you know, me, me, I can't shut up the electricity on them or nothing. They would have been living free for another year and a half. So they would have milked me for about two years. And that's why, um, you know, it left a bad taste in my mouth when I got rid of them. Because I was like, you can't trust anybody now. Unfortunately, it, they... 
A lot of people like that ruin it for a lot of good. I'm, you know, there's good people out there that they, you know. But I'm telling you, a lot of them, red flags. Red flags. Um, single male, 50 over, and got some just working, you know, with, you know, whatever. Like, you know, you know, below average intelligence, I'm going to say. Uh, red flag. I'm going to say, okay, there's something wrong with this guy. Either this guy is a bipolar person, criminal history. Uh, and a lot of them red flags too. The, no family. No family wants them. Because all, I, I had three single, and they were the last time they were up, there was three single males left. And all of them, no family wanted them. Like, you know, he, one of them openly told me, no, I don't talk to my dad. My dad, da, 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 da. the other one, no family ever came to see him. The other one, they wanted to do with him. So when you when you have no family that can even vouch for you, that means you, you was a bad person. You burned bridges. You're a shady person. You probably stole from them. Who knows what the hell you did. Embezzled them. Who knows what the hell you did all. Or drug issue or whatever and that's why you know they ruined that they ruined that whole um entrepreneur side of us we already we originally we came into this about oh we want to buy this property and buy another property over here we could have been renting on that property but it actually costs more to maintain it the upkeep of just the upkeep of any house can bankrupt you. Imagine upkeep on a few rentals, on a few houses, and you rent them out, and uh, a handful of tenants decide I don't want to pay rent no more, and now you need to get now you need to evict them. You know how much money that's going to cost you now to evict every person? It adds up fast. It'll bankrupt you. You know, that's why you know before, you know, thank God we didn't leverage. Thank God we didn't leverage to that point where we would have had, you know, several properties and especially here in New York with the taxes and all that, it, it would have been, it would have really been worse. But that's what happened to my oldest brother. That's what he did. He, he leveraged too much. A lot of people had that happened back in 2008. A lot of people were owning property they had no business owning, owning. They were way overextended, you know, because this this particular home here, uh, this is our home. So, but if we want to get another property and you want to borrow against this property, see now what you're doing is you're putting this property at risk to get another property, and then you better hope that that property, nothing ever happens, <laughs> and that's when people get in trouble. People get in trouble when they uh, overextend, you know. That's basic uh, accounting, you know. You have cash flow, right? You have a, a certain amount of cash that's coming in. But your expenses are starting to exceed your cash, your income. When your expenses are, more, when your expenses are higher than income, now you're in the red. <laughs> Simple as that. When your expenses are higher than your income, you're in the red. And that's what happened to, you know, that's why uh, there's going to be a, at some point the quality of life has to improve around here or your yeah, liability or we need to make an exit plan. We need to start saying, okay, I think it's time to, uh, you know, I'm going to have to, I'm going to do a fire sale on whatever merchandise I have here. And I call it merchandise because it is part of the channel. And I'll do a fire sale and, you know, that'll be it. It'll be like, okay, now it's time to sell and move to a a more, uh, a more tax-friendly state. Especially as we get older, you know. When, it's more about my wife when she's ready to retire. Because uh, I don't have, I'm not going to be, I'm not working until 90. I'm not going to happen. I wanted to work a couple of more years or so and before I turn 62. But right now, I'm staying home with my son. Uh, I don't want to put my son in daycare. I just don't want to do it. My son, 
And now he's, he has a week off. He's not at school. His whole week is off. So he's just been home all day with him. You know, this. You understand my son is growing very fast. He's nine years old now. He's growing very fast. Um, that time never comes back. You know, I'm staying, you know. And I feel like every minute that I'm not there with him, you're not going to get that back. Because when I blink of an eye, he's going to be a teenager. And then by then, he's not going to want to be around with me. He's going to say, ah, I want to be with my friend. I want to be with this man. So this is like the, uh, you know, this is like my time to really spend with him now. Because it's natural, you know, as he get older, you know, he's going to want to, you know, be more independent, you know. And that's why, you know, that, that was what happened with my two daughters. My two daughters, I didn't spend a lot of time with them. Let's see my oldest one. Because they, they lived in another state and, you know, it was just, uh, and, you know, it, 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 it took a toll on the, on, the, on the relationship. You know, she's not close to me at all. She doesn't care and as much as I tried, but, you know. And then my other daughter, we had a relationship. But again, when she got older, that was the end of that. And I was like, okay. But that's fine. You know what? She's an adult. And, uh, you know, she, she, you know she, she comes here once in a while. And she's, you know. But the other one, my oldest one, she wasn't going to do with me. And I said, it's fine. You know? Because me and her mom, you know, we had a. Uh, we broke up with her mom. And long story short, you know, um, you know, you brainwash. A lot of that stuff is brainwashing stuff. It's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? And I'm not going to sit around and dwell on it. You know, I, I, I'm the type of person. When I say, you know, when I tell her, I say, listen, you're old enough to do what you want to do. You don't want to have a relationship with my mother when she was alive. Their grandmother. You want to have a relationship with, my, with your grandmother my mother? And you know what? Then, you know. You know, when stuff really hits them real, you know, especially my oldest one, you know, shoot. We'll see. You yeah. <laughs> know? This is the way it is, bro. That's why I tell people, you know, I, I know guys that they go crazy. Oh, she's going to take away my son and they're going to move to another city. And I told them, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do about that, you know. Uh, one minute. Let me. Yeah. Oh, live stream. Right. Be right back. Hold on, hold on, my son. Yeah, so, um, you know, I know I know some people that were like that. They were like, really, oh, I can't have to do that. I said, well, you don't have a choice. You're not the custodial parent. Uh, you know, what I tell them is, you know what, good luck on that. And when she gets older, you know, you just got to be there for her when she's older. And she's going to ask questions. Why, why did you move away from that? And blah, blah, blah. And if you're... If you know you won the right, and you wasn't a bad person, and you tried your best, you know that's what I, I my line to them was: when you leave and you you want to leave, whatever, that's fine, that's your life. But you're gonna explain to them why I'm not around. That's it, and then that's what happened. One of them were I know what happened, Dad. You know I know it's not your fault. You know, and I said no, it's not, and it's not my fault. It's not her fault. She wanna she wanna her own life somewhere else. That's fine. The other one, on the other hand, was like, oh, well, you know, um, he bad mouthed me, you know, no, no, you know, it's a whole history. It's crazy. But I knew people that were like, you know, oh, I'm going to I'm going to stop it from that. I said, no, there's nothing you can do about that, bro. <laughs> Don't think, you know, just let it go. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. I had to take a chill back approach and all that. Because some stuff like that will drive you to do things that you don't want to do. You don't want to do that. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to get to the point where you're gonna get an order of protection on you, a restraining order. You know, you don't want any of that. When a person tells you they don't want to be around you, you gotta respect that. That's it. That's what I did. You know. You know, and and uh, you know, and vice versa. I t I told the same thing to 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 her. I said, I don't I don't want to be around you. You're nuts. Be on your way, and I know you have. I know you're. You know you're the custodial 
parent of my daughter. I wish you luck. You know what? Um, I guess I have to go through the court and pay you and that's it. And you know what? I'm paying you off. That's the way I thought about it. He's unfortunate, but that's the way I thought about it. I said, okay, I'm going to pay you off, but I don't want to deal with you no more. Because you can't have it both ways. You cannot be like, uh, you know, I'm paying the court and you want side money. It don't work that way. I said, no, no, no. You took me to court. You want anything, go to the court. And that's the way I dealt with it. That's it. You know, I, I know guys that were the opposite. They were like, no, but you, I go in there and say that I've been on that. You can't do that. They don't care. Court does not care about that. The court, court only cares how much you make, how much can they take out, and that's it. They don't care about if you sat down with her at 3 in the morning, help her with her homework. Uh, they don't care if, you, uh, if you're if you a straight-up guy with, 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 with the kid. They don't care about that. All they care about is they want their money, and they're going to send their money to this person. That's it. That's what they care about. <laughs> that's what they care about. Trust me, I know guys that went crazy over there. And a couple of them actually wound up locked up for that stuff. Because they were they got too emotional. You can't get emotional with this stuff. It's hard. And I'm telling you, you know, I learned it because I, I, you know, I, my oldest was born in 1992. So, you know, and I, I, I'm telling you, I've been around. <laughs> and the court only care about is, uh, you know, and I, the first day I went to the court, they were like, I, I got money on it. They said, we don't give a shit about all that. How much you make now? Oh, you make this much? We're going to take out this much. That's it. <laughs> That's it. They don't care about what have, what have you done in the past. Uh, do you, you know, child care. They don't care about that. They said, no, no, no. How much you make? Uh, this is a... Uh, they come with a calculator. Uh, 20%. Da, 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 da. Ching, ching, ching. This is how much you're paying. That's it. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, it's hard to lower it. Trust me. It's almost impossible to lower. Unless you're willing to spend money on a good lawyer that can lower the amounts for you. You've seen all those cases. People people paying $50,000 a month for child support. Does a child really need $50,000 a month? You know, I don't remember the last time I made $50,000 in one year. In fact, I never made $50,000 in one year. Never. Not even close. Okay? All right? So when you see some of these cases at 50000 a month, that's just ludicrous. It's insane. But that's what they do. They say, oh, because they think that, you know, for example, like A-Rod. A-Rod. A person like A-Rod, right? You know, he made, he made millions when he played baseball. Now he's on T now he's on MLB and all that other stuff. Fox Sports and all that. He does a uh, no, no. You're paying fifty thousand a month. Bam, that's it. They don't care. They don't care. They don't know that one day they can this man can get canned. Or, you know, uh oh, whatever, you have bad ratings, bye bye. Or they or they or they demote you to a, 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 a another sh another lower audience program or whatever. Okay. Good luck trying to lower that down. <laughs> that's why I tell people, you know, same thing with investing. You can't get emotional. Don't get emotional. Now that's rule number one. Don't get emotional. Rule number two. Don't get emotional. Guess what rule number three is? Don't get emotional. Because when you get emotional about anything, it fucks up your judgment. It fucks up your judgment. This for anything in life, anything. And I'm talking, about, I'm not talking about money, uh, you know, relationship, anything. When you get too emotional, it's like a bad, it's like poker. You know, you're sitting there poker, right? And you, and you, 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 you don't have a good hand, but you can bluff them. But when you start getting emotional, you start showing your emotion. Oh my god, I got a, I got a fucked up hand. Oh my god. And they see through that, they're gonna, they're gonna take advantage of you. Gonna take advantage of you when you're emotional. People are gonna take advantage of you too. They're gonna take advantage of you. I've been there. I've been there where I was an emotional wreck, and people take advantage of you. 
But when you're strong and you're steadfast and you don't get emotional about some things, you're going to get better results. That includes investing. When you're panic selling, that's emotional. When you panic sell, it's because you're emotional. Because you're watching TV right now and you're seeing the sky fall. Oh my God, everything is down 1,000 points. Oh my God. But you got to step back from that. You got to say, yeah, but how many times did the market tanked? And then a few days later, it went up again. It started going up again. And then a few months later, not only it went past the all-time high. I mean, excuse me, not only it, it went up, but now we got an all-time high. But that day, you got emotional. You got emotional. You said, oh, my God, the sky is falling. It's raining. The whole world is going to end. I need to dump everything. And then you realize, instead of just doing one thing you could have done that day, and it happened to me. It happened to me a couple of times. But I learned now. This is years ago. Turn off the freaking TV. Just turn it off. Turn it off. Turn off the radio. Just turn everything off for, for a few hours. 24 hours. Just turn everything off. Don't even go online. And then, you know what? You know, you come back a day later. And you say, okay. Well, it was down a lot. But now it's coming back up. Remember. People, you just remember a simple thing. For every, for every, for every, every stock that you sell, there's somebody buying it. <laughs> okay. So when you panic sell, they're saying, ah, oh, look at that sucker, that sucker selling in. Little did they know that, you know, I'm getting it at a cheaper price. Eventually it's going to go up. He's going to get out because he doesn't have the stomach for it. And then you come and buy it at a cheap price. And then you write it out. You write it out. You know? <laughs> All right, you write it out. Like during the pandemic, you know, uh, during the pandemic, you say, "Yeah, uh, let's see, let's look at total gain percentage." You see, some of them are down. You write it out. This one is not adjusted yet, but this one. You write it out. During the pandemic, Marathon Oil, right? At the lowest, it was $3.32. $3.32. We bought $166 worth of it. That's it. 50 shares. During the pandemic. Is it, oh, Marathon Oil. Because remember... In April of 2020, the price of oil was plummeting. Nobody was driving. It was in the middle of the pandemic. No, there was no air travel. No nothing. Barely, barely any air travel. Everything was shut down. People thought that they were gonna go down to zero. So I said, Nah, bro. Marathon oil is too big to fail. Now it's worth thirteen hundred dollars. Just on that $166 investment. 730% gain. Why? Because somebody panic sold that. Somebody panic sold that. And I was a shark. My wife and I were a shark. We said, Oh my God, look how cheap this is. Yeah, let's get a few of those. And by the way, it's going to go up. It's going to go up more. I think it's going to go up. It's going to go up. So right now, each share is $27.57. Right? Yeah. That's not going to easily go to $50. Easily. Marathon oil. Good. That's one example of uh, somebody panic sold. And you picked it up on the cheap. Right? No? So, of course, Meta's right there. 
Uh, I'm trying to give a better example. There's one that I remember. Let me see. Total gains in terms of money. There's some that are, you know, yeah, lost some. I'm not gonna spend on Anyway, let me check the second one. But yeah, you can, um, a lot of it is that, just being emotional. You get emotional, it really messes up your judgment. And I'm not saying to be cold hearted. Don't be cold hearted. Just saying that, you know, there's a time to, uh, and this is not one of them. You can't get emotional when it comes to, um, another one, Slumberger. $16.79 back in uh, April of 2020. Yeah, April 20. I think it was April. Yeah, April. April. So 101. Now it's $54.31 a share. And $1,600 worth is now worth $5,400. $230 percent gain $3,778 profit okay why because you can get emotional even though the sky was falling all around me and my wife and we look at that TV and we're like you know this pandemic thing is not going to last forever right this whole doom and gloom shit and I say it it's not going to last forever those are buying opportunities and you, you're gonna get that a tassel. You're young. You're, you're in the, you're in your late twenties, right? Um, you're gonna get a few of those in your lifetime. You need to know when to get in on those. While the other while while everybody else is running toward the while everybody else is running and dumping their their their, their stock, you got to be in there to take them. Okay. You know, you got to be there. It's not that's, <coughs> excuse me, that is opportunities. Those are opportunities to get in at uh, those prices, you know. For example, you know, uh, I'm going to say, you know, hey, listen, I thought that this president, the market was going to be t tanking. We had all-time highs. There's a few factors why that happened. But, and of course, he's going to use this as a campaign thing. Oh, you know, we've got all-time highs on all three indices. The Dow went up record high a few days ago. The NASDAQ, all record high. The S&P, all record high. He's going to go, he's going to use this as his campaign. Uh, you know, prop, so, you know, that's why you should like me again. Because the, look at the stock market. It's all all-time high. You know. And that's fine. And a lot of people are going to say, yeah, you know what? That's fine, too. And it might stay that way. It might stay even after November. If, say, he get reelected, it might keep going up. It might, it might plummet. And even if it does plummet, again, I still, no matter who's in charge, I, if it does plummet, that'll be another one. My opportunity. Because we already... Tested this uh, uh, these highs. You know, same thing with with crypto. You know, uh, remember it was three years ago, about two or two and a half, three years ago, where this thing plummeted. It was down to nineteen thousand. Nineteen thousand. I remember it was nineteen thousand. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have bought someone, but it was a nineteen. But it's okay, you know what? It's okay. Now, it, now this can go to eighty. This can go to a hundred. But at some point, it is gonna stay. People are all gonna sell off to make to cash in on those profits, and that's fine. You got to be able to understand that, and that's why you got to take the emotion out of that. And there's no room for emotion. When it comes to investing, you cannot get emotional. You cannot get emotional when it comes to investing. If you get emotional when investing, um, it'll ruin you. It'll ruin you. You have no business doing. You have no business being in investing. 
if you get emotional. You cannot get emotional. I'm gonna keep, and I'm gonna say it over and over. I'm gonna say it over and over. People, are, uh, you know, all these channels they talk about fundamentals, about the numbers and all that. That's fine, but I main thing for me and my wife is really my wife because she was the one that really, uh, she 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 was the more dis. Believe it or not, I'm telling you. Yeah, I know. Knock on wood. She was the more stable one. I, I was the one that was more emotional at years ago. And, you know, I learned. I learned. I said, you cannot be emotional about investing. You cannot be. You cannot. No, 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 no. Because you're going to make bad decisions. And also, get that out of your head. Not everything, you, everything you're going to buy is a winner. <laughs> As you can see, um, you win some. Excuse me. You win some. Come on. Yeah, I don't have the premium account. Sorry, I, I'm not. It doesn't. It's not in my budget. You win some, but guess what? You lose some. Some are down. See, some are down sixty percent. Some of them are down. One is fifty percent. So you win some, you lose some. So you're not. You know. You know. You know. You're not always gonna pick winners. So you need to get that out of your head too. But that's okay. You know what? It's fine. That's why you you diversify. That's why you diversify too. You know, one sector might be might go bad, the other sector might be okay, the other sector might get hot. It balances each other out, you know. You don't have all your eggs in one basket, or you're not putting all your money on one racehorse. So that's what I mean. Anyway, I am going to sign off now. It's been, I've been on for 2 hours and 11 minutes. And, uh, yeah, I am going to sign off now. So, another, another exciting episode of Danny Finance live stream. <laughs> exciting. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me. My, my nose is itching now. I need, to put the, I need to bring the air filter down here. So, anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. Everybody have a good night. And I'll see you on the next time.